द क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम सोनाली आई गॉट मैरिड आफ्टर सिक्स इयर्स ऑफ रिलेशनशिप एंड इट्स बीन 1.5 पॉइंट फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ मैरिड लाइफ नाउ ड्यू टू कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग पर्सनैलिटीज माई हजबेंड एंड आई फाइट अ लॉट इन एप्रिल वी हैड अ रियली बिग कॉन्फ्लिक्ट एंड पुलिस कॉट इन्वॉल्व एंड नाउ वी आर लिविंग सेपरेटली एंड both of us are traumatized and i do not know whether the situation will lead to divorce i don't want to go to the court i don't know what to do i cry myself to sleep every night he doesn't talk to me i love him a lot i want him back how to deal with this situation so only you want an answer and you want an answer within the framework you have narrated to me that framework involves attraction conflict repulsion reconciliation breaking up patching up patching up breaking up and spending the life this way having something amiss in the relationship at all points to keep you engaged there was a time when your mind was full of romantic thoughts now your mind is full of anxious thoughts in either case the relationship is keeping your mind quite occupied and that too with the other person at the center of all thoughts all preoccupation that's the framework of the common life in relationships that's the framework within which so called lovers operate that's the framework within which married couples operate that is also the framework within which divorced individuals operate right that framework includes everything coming together drifting apart going to the court to solemnize your marriage going to the court to dissolve your marriage ha huh? calling up the parents of the other one to beg for his or her hand calling up the parents of the other one to threaten them with a clenched fist hmm what remains common is that you dial the same numbers albeit for contrasting purposes right sometimes he is the prince charming on the white horse Hmm? the handsome knight in the 
shining armor and sometimes he is the monster personified who must be accused of misogyny and and uh, harassment of all kinds and must be dragged by the collar to the police station and then to the court no <laughs> one thing does not change what your mind is full of that one person hmm? when he is at home you want to fight with him when he is not at home you worry where he is gone you also feel apprehensive he might be seeing someone else applies to both genders more or less so that's the framework pretty comfortable no all that we need to do is while away time that's our biggest problem somehow this problem called life which is time has to be tackled and we do not know the right solution so we go for these kinds of juvenile ways if you don't have anything proper to do with life then just smoke it away in this in that hmm? some kind of addiction we need and there is hardly an addiction bigger than the body of an individual i specifically said the body because there is actually not much more really to the relationship or is there all right we we wear we love to wear all kinds of pretenses right but the woman goes after the man the man goes after the woman these days sometimes a woman goes after a woman a man goes after a man whatever be the case it's a body chasing another body or it's a body missing another body getting it it's a top class addiction really fantastic and you can remain caught in this or that you can remain stuck in the usual cycle and the years will keep rolling past you you will not realize when you move from 15 to 30 from 30 to 50 and from 50 to your deathbed and what were you doing all this while you were busy with that person of the opposite gender seriously is he that worthy or is she that worthy is that person really so important what merits do you see in that person seriously i did not uh, read out the whole description you sent me but here you are saying he is an escapist your very words sonali he is an escapist and he shies away from difficult situations this is the kind of person you are talking of what great merit do you see in him then and i'm pretty sure if he is asked to describe you he won't be too kind either if that's the assessment the two of you have of each other shouldn't you firstly ask what's really the need to worry and wonder and think so much about the other after all such is your affection towards each other that you really had to bring the police in between you don't call the police 
on God. Do you? Well, we might as well, we never know, but theoretically at least. You call the police on a robber. You call the police on a rapist. That's your assessment of the other person. The other person might certainly be better than your assessment of him. I don't deny. You will argue, well, the police was called in in a moment of heat and there was really no need. And we were just carried away by our emotions and anger. So we dialed 100 and the police came in and we didn't allow it to escalate and it was all cooled down. That's fine. But still, please tell me, is this the best you can do with your life? Is that person really worthy of being a center to your universe? But look at your description, you are saying, I cry myself to sleep every day. Obviously all the time you are thinking of him. He too must be worried, might be. You say he is traumatized. Why do you need to remain caged in this framework? Why? The worst thing is you are asking for a solution within this framework. Won't help. All the solutions that you are potentially going to try are all within this framework. You say you are in Delhi, the fellow is in Mumbai, you will probably fly down to Mumbai and we know the rest of it, no? That oft repeated banal filmy story. You go, you knock at his door and one of the three, four possible things happen. And we already know in advance what those three, four possibilities are. No fifth possibility ever exists. Had it existed, our movies would have already shown it. After all, the possibilities themselves are created by the movies. We are not internally allowed to go beyond the movies, are we? There are so many things that would just not cross our minds, that would just not even occur to us as thoughts, ideas, had the movies not so strongly, so lucratively suggested them to us. Can we for a moment talk of something else, please? And how do you know the talking of something else is any less engaging than talking of your relationship? How do you know that you as a woman exist just for the sake of relationships, please? I do not feel very inclined towards answering your query your way because your way is futile. If I accept your way, I am not helping you. Why are you thinking of this person the entire day? You were once a girl You would have read mathematics, history, science, geography, languages. Didn't you find inspiring figures there? Didn't those books arouse fantastic ideas in you? What happened to all of that? 
how is it so that as an adult mature woman all you do is think of a man please what happened today if i ask you who is pythagoras or who is pascal your face would draw a blank today if i ask you what are the most important issues before independent india you would say well i have never given it a thought why aren't you thinking about these things please because the movies never taught you to think about these things and when i say movies i mean popular culture ha huh? do you understand why the ocean waves go into that that's much more exciting and engaging than continuously thinking of an average joe a common mediocre man and when i say that i don't mean to insult the two of you or either of you it's a fact of life the majority of mankind is mediocre i mean you take any distribution in nature 80 to 90% of people lie on either side of the median who are they they are the average folk most of us are average folk why do you want to keep thinking of an common average person nameless faceless one in the crowd one with the crowd I'm sure when you were younger you thought of excellence didn't you no you would have had dreams in your dreams all that you were thinking of was men and relationships and romantic adventures and male features is that so i don't believe that sonali i'm sure you are much better than that you would have thought of penetrating the skies you would have thought of roaming the world you would have thought of knowing what mankind is where we come from what our future is you have been concerned with politics you have been concerned with international relations with the great events that mankind has seen with the challenges that we all face today no what happened to all of that what happened to your love for your favorite author one day you might have picked up a table tennis bat or a lawn tennis racket where is that racket you used to love chess once upon a time where are all the pawns Or have you just pawned away yourself to a relationship?
Tell me, please. It beats me. How one person can cling so desperately to another person and that to someone who is practically gone. No, I am not being insensitive, I am not being heartless. I understand what you mean by humanness. I understand human emotions. I know memories. I know the, the pain and the bite of the moments you have cherished. But I also know that life is enormous and it doesn't wait for one person. It must not. That one must have a worthy goal in life, a beautiful project to be absorbed in. But I see where you are coming from. Most people have none of that. No goal, no project, nothing worth doing. Then what is it that they have? Relationships. Their internal bulletin board has news on just one topic. What is the topic? Relationships. And the more existentially jobless you are, the more you will be a sucker for relationships. He looked at me. I have to prepare breakfast for Chomu. He did not look at me. Where has he gone? What will happen to us? All you care for is your friends. But what about us, Sona? Have you never thought about our future? Please. I'm not mocking you. I'm trying to wake you up. You gave me three reasons why you didn't visit him in the other city. It's quite interesting that n those reasons didn't include the COVID second wave. It does not exist for you. Nothing outside the limited domain of Babu and Shona exists for you. The world might be falling apart. It doesn't matter. All that matters to me is these days I am not with my Babu. Where is Covid in all this? Where is climate change in all this? Tell me please. Huh? And if you are geopolitically inclined China is making fresh advances in the eastern sector as well as in Ladakh. Are you thinking about it? When you were a girl, with pride you used to sing Janaganaman Adinai. Vande Matram was a war cry for you, was it not? Yes, Sonali? Where is all of that? Nothing. All gone. 
Doklam does not matter, Galwan does not matter, only Babu and Shona matter. You probably don't even bother to read the newspapers, do you? Because newspapers, they don't carry a picture of my sweetheart. Why do I look at them? Tell me who are the recent Nobel Prize winners? You won't know because you don't bother. Because all you bother about is the man-woman business. Is that all to life? Are you watching the Tokyo games, Sonali? They are broadcasting the highlights every night. How is it that you have no time to watch the highlights of the biggest sporting extravaganza and instead you say you cry every night to sleep? Instead of crying, why don't you watch the medal winners? Australia thrashed India 7-1 today, you know, in hockey, men's hockey. Why? Because probably the players were missing their sona a lot due to COVID restrictions. The players have not been allowed to carry a lot of people and entourage. I might be factually wrong. I just want to make a point, get the point. I'm not mocking our national hockey team. And I wish them good luck in their next match. I suppose they are playing Spain now. Did you bother to inquire what happened to Vikas Krishnan? He was so well prepared, why did he lose in the first round? No, because it doesn't matter to you. What matters? I whatsapped my Babu. When will the blue color come? The tick. Why is it remaining so heartlessly grey? Hmm? So, the US has pulled out of Afghanistan. What's your opinion on it, Sonali? Please tell me. What do you think are the ramifications for India? Please tell me, Sonali. Please. No, 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 no. no. I don't think about these things, sir. No, I don't. Now, Uzbekistan, Pakistan, Afghanistan and US are forming a quad. You would probably know of only one quad. Japan, Australia, India, US. There is a second one in making and it's a pretty dangerous one. What do you think of it, Sonali? Please tell me. I don't think of it at all. As a woman, all I am supposed to think of is, but what is our future, Babu? Our future, I mean our, the two of us, please. The rest of the world can go to hell. All that matters is me and my Babu. The pain will remain. We are born with this body and this, this body has an inherent tendency to stick. We do get attached. I'm not asking you to be inhuman or superhuman, Sonali. Please, I, I do sympathize with you and because I do, therefore I'm taking the liberty of appearing a bit harsh. I know what you are going through. I have gone through it. But 
one has to still keep her mind firm one has to know the relative priorities of various things no yes it will hurt it it will pinch very badly i i truly i truly empathize with this but fight it out and you must know what is important life is not a trivial matter life is not such a cheap thing that you can blow it away two pence value your life take care of yourself involve yourself in higher pursuits this man woman game every living creature is playing in prakriti don't you know the cow and the bull <laughs> a lot of bull at the bodily level every woman is a cow and every man is a bull is this what you are born for just to keep playing this game endlessly go beyond this game go beyond your imagined and restrictive inner framework relationships are great when they help elevate your consciousness and that's the only purpose of relationships in life if relationships are not fulfilling that purpose then relationships are just a big waste a great great drag and i repeat there is no better way more effective way to waste life than to make a relationship the center of your existence since eternity it is a way tried tested proven supremely successful want to waste your life you don't have to do anything spectacular just pick up some random person and make him or her the center of your life and now for sure at least this birth is wasted i'm not anti relationship or something i am an advocate of great and right relationships and this is not a right relationship you are describing here these are not the symptoms how does one get into a right relationship not by searching for the right person please right relationships would be definitely accidental involve yourself in a worthy project and then the one who helps you accomplish that project is worthy of being related to move with all your might towards a great destination and then if you come across a sincere co traveler then that person is worthy of being related to 
remember you walk towards a great destination you are not wandering around in search of a person you getting it you are not saying oh i have a vacancy in my heart and i am looking for a sweetheart to fill it up you are not looking for a person you are sold out to a purpose and in pursuit of that purpose accidentally you meet you come across the right person and that's how beautiful relationships are born what purpose do you have in life sonali and if you raise the relationship sense a purpose you should have already known the relationship is not going to give you any joy i'm sorry if i hurt you in some way you will most probably say i did but try to get the the core the gist of what i want to communicate keep the hurt aside for a while yes questions i would be mighty surprised if some faces here have no questions on this topic i was not talking to sonali the person i was talking to sonali the concept and it's a very shared and a very common concept several of us are sold out to that concept so please speak up doesn't matter what your color is maroon or green or whatever all of you are sonalis in whichever gender so speak up hmm uh, acharya ji uh, this problem of being attached in relationships uh, people is have tried attached or trapped? Oh, um, attached this problem of attachment in relationships hmm. uh, so there are various ways in which uh, this this is something which people recognize and then they try to remedy it in various ways uh, some things that are there especially uh, in the west people have concepts of like open relationships where they say that we will be stay together at a bodily level but we will not be attached uh, you know uh, in a, at a certain level uh it seems to work in some sense that we have a relationship where at a very bodily level but we will not be attached at an emotional level and then i try to remedy it in that way see you cannot have template based relationships relationships are not commercial agreements where you define the boundaries very clearly and also the the timelines and such things ha huh? relationship has to be an exercise in greatness ha huh? as a great individual you want to relate in a great way to another great individual no why do you then want to oblige or constrain the other are you insecure are you afraid do you want to exploit the other why do you want to give the relationship a form a name a legal or religious structure
Why do you want to be certain in advance that the relationship will include bodily pleasure or that it will not include bodily attachment? If you are coming from a point of greatness, then let the relationship take its due course. If there has to be physical intimacy, it will come. But let it come without you making any compromise on your greatness. Wonderful. You can have kids. Huh? You can even raise an entire family. What's the condition? Don't deviate from your greatness. That should be your first priority. Adhering to that priority Remaining steadfastly committed to that priority governed by that priority if you can have physical intimacy, wonderful. Greatness does not preclude anything in particular. All that greatness precludes is smallness, not sex. What is it that greatness is allergic to? Smallness, not sex. In general, in spirituality, sex has been look down upon because most people make sexual intimacy an exercise in smallness. Therefore, the sages and the scriptures have been so eloquent against sex. Actually, it is not sex they are so much against. It is the smallness that accompanies sex, which is the culprit. Hmm? And 99.9% .9 of the times, when we touch the other, it's an animal touch. It is a touch coming from a small place within us, and it is a touch that seeks to reduce the touch to one, to a small entity. Therefore, sex is detested and decried. Hmm? Be great and have a great relationship. And then come what may. Hmm? What of abstinence and what of intimacy? We don't bother. Hmm? Nothing is compulsory and nothing is prohibited. Hmm? 